Welcome to our demonstration of interoperability between VMware Virtual SAN, OpenStack, and NSX. We begin the demonstration at the OpenStack Horizon UI and an empty tenant called Demo vSAN in the drop-down menu on the left-hand side. On the browser tab bar, we have the Horizon UI, vSphere web client, and two windows of NSX Manager logged in and pointing at the production NSX environment. The NSX Manager windows contain one pre-canned query for the Demo vSAN tenant's logical networks and another pre-canned query for the Demo vSAN tenant's logical routers. At initial point, both of the queries contain no objects, as the tenant has not deployed anything yet. The pre-canned queries contain OpenStack tenant ID. Let us now see how we get the OpenStack tenant ID from the pre-canned query. On the Horizon UI, we click on Access and Security and get the tenant ID of the API access portion. This ID is generally not required, but allows admins to query NSX Manager to use tenant-specific objects, such as switches and routers. Next, we switch to the two NSX Manager windows with the pre-canned queries and paste the tenant ID to craft a tenant-specific query. In this example, it is already typed to keep it clean. We refresh the query to show that there is nothing pre-created for this tenant. We switch back to the Horizon UI and click on Network Topology under Manage Network to view the available shared provider networks. We go into the Networks tab and create two networks in the Horizon UI. We name the first network Web Tier and assign the IP subnet, enable DHCP for the new network, and click on Create. We name the second one as App Tier. Note that the IP subnets associated with them are different. NSX uses overlay networking to create these networks. VLANs are not consumed from the physical infrastructure for each of these networks. Next, we click on Routers and create a tenant router. and set a gateway to one of the provider networks shown earlier in this demo. We then create two interfaces on the new router, one on each subnet of the two new networks that we created earlier in this demo. These interfaces will provide routing capability between each network and outbound needed access via the gateway set in the step above. We again click on Network Topology and see a graphical representation of the two networks connected via a router, which is connected to the provider network. Next, to verify that the logical switches and logical router that backs the topology are created and visible in NSX, we refresh the NSX Manager queries. We see that they are visible in NSX. We will now launch an instance that will be connected to the web tier network. We go to the Instance tab and click on Launch Instance. We name this instance as KVM Instance, choose the CPU and memory preferences, set the boot details, and click on Launch. Note, since we are using a KVM targeted image, the KVM instance will be launched on a KVM hypervisor in a different part of the data center. Next, we launch another instance called vSphere instance for Windows 2008 server. It is also connected to the web tier network. Here again, note that the vSphere instance will be launched on an ESXi hypervisor because the instance uses ESXi as the target image. This same L2 logical network is available to instances running on any hypervisor, even when two instances are running in completely separate parts of the data center, with no L2 connectivity at all between them at the physical layer.
This is a unique feature of overlay networking provided by NSX. We then switch back to the vSphere web client and refresh the view and see that the newly launched instance is being created. Once the instance is established, we can see that its disks are stored on vSAN, firstly by the name of the data store in the summary pane, then by viewing the properties of the actual VMDK, and that vSAN has created mirrored components of the disk files on different hosts. We switch back to the Horizon UI and access the console of the newly created vSphere vSAN-based Windows 2008 instance. We send a Control-Alt-Delete to log in. After logging in, we launch the command prompt. In our demo, the instance has got a DHCP address for the web tier network, and it can ping the Ubuntu instance at 10.0.10.3. To demonstrate identifying the DHCP address, we log into the Ubuntu 12.4 instance. Notice that the IP address is 10.0.10.3. We then ping the Windows host 10.0.10.4. We ping 8.8.8.8, .8 which is a Google DNS server from the Ubuntu instance to demonstrate that the logical networks have access to the external world via the provider network we attached our router to. Next, we launch a third instance of Windows 2008 server called App Instance running on vSphere. We will attach this instance to the other newly created network, the App Tier network. We click back on the vSphere web client to demonstrate the instance spawning. Once it is spawned, we click on Horizon UI and access the console of the new instance. We ping 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 from the Windows 2008 server-based instance, which will demonstrate that the instance on the AppTier network can reach the outside world. We then ping 10.0.10.4, which is a VM on the WebTier network, and see that routing between the two logical networks is functional. At last, we go back to the Network Topology view in Horizon UI, which will demonstrate the full topology, complete with networks, routers, and instances. We can further click on an instance to access its details. Networks and routers in this view are also live and can be clicked on to access the details. Next, we go back to the Instances and click on Terminate Instances to delete all instances created. Then, under Router View, we delete our router interfaces, and then the router itself. We then delete the two networks by clicking on Delete Networks under Networks tab. This gives us the initial state where we had started. This concludes our demonstration of interoperability between Virtual SAN, OpenStack, and VMware NSX. Thank you.